So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello, this is Robin Norgren, and I am a creativity and art facilitator and you can find what I do at www.josiesartschool.com and also at www.brightchildmontessori.com. Going through a series uh, that I wrote uh, about 10 years ago called Your Creative Peace, Finding and Deepening Your Creative Voice While Communing with God. Um, this is something that I put together as a result of my own journey of trying to find my creative voice. And on the 10-year anniversary of that journey, I thought it would be uh, um, something that I would share. And if you would like to go along with this book, it is available at my website. Let's start with a quote. One needs something to believe in, something for which one can have wholehearted enthusiasm. This is by Hannah Sinesh. Julia Cameron coined the, the term believing mirrors in her book, Find Water, The Art of Perseverance. Believing mirrors are those people who are generous enough to reflect us back as gifted and interesting. The believing mirror in a creative's life is vital to raising the probability of a long and inspiring creative life. I can attest to times when solitude is an absolute necessity to processing thoughts, generating new ideas, and executing new plans. However, the artist must also prepare for those times when the doubts arrive, attempting to undermine and diminish those sparks of new ideas. Our believing mirrors understand this process in an artist's life. The glow of those high days of productivity and the dread days when you are questioning the value of how you are using your time and energy. When the well seems completely tapped of resources, those are the times that these gems are vital in your life. A believing mirror puts the right encouragement into your conversation. He or she helps you feel heard, and challenges wrong thinking. This person lifts the veil of the dread and holds your hand as you step forward by faith through the down days, and you can feel your momentum drifting back. I was finding that this is what I was missing in my life, believing mirrors. Think about this. Name the people in your life that God has brought to help you to hold the mirror and reflect the value of your creative gifts. Do they recognize that they play such a vital role in your life? What ways has God reminded you this week that he is the God who sees you? What ways can you put yourself into an environment to have good, balanced feedback for your work? And have you tried any new things creatively this week? And how has that process been for you? I'd like to introduce you to the owner of a business called Soul Blessings. Her name is Bev Falls. Her creative influences are God, scripture, music, and nature. Her preferred medium of creativity is canvas, paper, and paint. Here's a bio. Her name is Bev Falls, and she at the time was 57 years old. She loves God with her whole heart, and she says, I am a maker of art and beautiful messes. I'm married to my high school sweetheart, mother to two sons, grandmother to two precious boys who are journeying through the sweet life full of love, growth, trials, surrender, and grace. When asked about one of her earliest creative memories, she said, One of my earliest creative memories is finger painting and making greeting cards for my family members on birthdays, holidays, or for whatever reason. Lots of pasting, gluing, and coloring going on all the time. And of course, making paper dolls with my sister. 
When I asked her, did you have a creative habit that make, made a smooth transition from your childhood into your adult life? She said, yes, many of them did. Creating has always been a part of her life and a part of who she is, whether it be sewing, quilting, stenciling, card making, scrapbooking, photography, and now she does collage art. She says that creating gifts for loved ones, sewing blankets and quilts, making clothes for her kids when they were little, all of those things along with decorating her home and scrapbooking were things that brought her joy. I asked her, did she have a creative hiatus and what caused her to come back if she fell away for a while? Bev said deeply painful circumstances with loved ones in her family took her deep into a hiatus about nine years ago. And then about three years ago, God and, and her reawakening happened, and he brought her back to her art. She said, so I had a period of about six years of my life where I was grieving around a lot of tragedy and feeling very damned up emotionally. God has helped me to release and express my grief and eventual healing. Art truly has been my therapy. She says God has clearly been instrumental in her ability to express herself artistically. She says he wants her to use her and gl to glorify him through the art she makes with her heart and with her hands. She said she read an, an amazing book by J. Scott McElroy called Finding Divine Inspiration, Working with the Holy Spirit in Your Creativity. And she says it really embraced and validated her own feelings about making art for and with God. He actually wants to collaborate with me, she says. Right now, her most prized uh, way of sharing her gift is through collage art. I'd like to start with a, a prompt as God as faithful and use this verse. 1 Kings 19.12 After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire came a gentle whisper. Here we are journeying together, and we've walked through phases of my creative life, and I hope that you have found places to hook on and pull forth your own journey. I hope that there are reminders of the whispers in your life were, that were way back um, before you even noticed them. And I hope that you saw the faithfulness of God holding the marker in your story. The times you and I may choose to discount those whispers are the exact moments that we miss that God is passionate and present. And those are the times we overlook the creativity in God and in how God goes about bringing us back to who he is and created each one, one of us to be. And how he never gives up on the best life he's planned for us. I want you to go through the challenge and challenge others around you, if you can, to keep their creativity as part of their lifestyle and to pull it into their identity as being a follower of Jesus, that we are all creative souls nourished by our creativity. Think about over the last few weeks, how have you changed your view of yourself as a creative person? Has God spoken to you about needing to move more deeply into your creative life? What will help you to listen to those whispers? And are you able to give your own interpretation of what it means to hear the whispers in your life? As we go forward into the next few weeks of this podcast, what I'd like to do is I would like to start adding a um, component of poetry as well. Poetry has been something that's always been elusive to me, but very fascinating. Um, just the conciseness you have to have with your words, um, your ability to really make every word be f bursting with freedom, with the freedom to express what you're trying to express, but without being verbose. Something about that um, I have found to be very fascinating. Um, in a, the last couple of years, I've really been understanding more and more that the idea of being very succinct with my words and even with being um, a listener as opposed to an advice giver 
has really shifted in my life over the last few years. That sometimes the ability to just hold space is what we call it in, in chaplain world, to sit with someone, to just let yourself sit as a container for them to just open up and feel safe and trusted, that they can have their own feelings without having someone um, judge it. It's something I'm starting to think about even as a mother, how I can sit with my children and listen to them and they know that it's a safe place to speak. I hope you're enjoying this series. Again, this is something where you could easily just bring out a, um, your own journal and write down the questions. Or if you want it already formatted for you, you may go over to my website um, on Etsy under Josie's Art School, and you can either download the PDF or you can buy the um, soft cover of the book. Thanks so much for joining me.